let's get away from the harsh weather for a little while. It's still summer, man. Let's go to a nice sunny area. Perhaps an area that has many bean stalks and flowers? Ah, this looks like just the place. I guess. And our Magons now look like all the monkeys or something like that. Since we're in a more natural setting, the enemies will look different accordingly. But there's nothing out of the ordinary in this level. We got some bulbs that act as spiral platforms, just like in the horror manor level. Oh, there we go. I was afraid we wouldn't get a large enough mega on there for a second. And fittingly as well, the first one is used to reach a far too out of range statue part. The rest, like this one, are all necessary for advancing, which is of course always preferable. Yeah, normally you'd not think stepping on flowers would be beneficial, but whatever. I wonder if those beanstalks were naturally grown with the climbing boards. I don't know who would have settled in a place like this to live. The enemies don't need them since they mostly fly, so... Who was kind enough to leave them for us to get them? I mean, if those rungs were not there, the enemies would have won immediately since Wario is evidently not a natural climber. I mean, look at the guy. He depends on spiraling flowers to advance, and giant leaves that can somehow support his enormous girth. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me either. Anyway, the first hatch here is pretty easy. These are four towers of breakable blocks. You only really need to knock down two of them. This one here is going to be in jumping distance for us from the ground, and the other in distance of this one. Simple enough. Tuli Patui may sound like it has the dumbest name in the game, and it pretty much does. Not only that, but he is also the most unintimidating. Now, the red and yellow treasures will, in fact, be down here, so once we hit both switches, we will return very shortly. Yeah! Bet you didn't know that stingrays could float on the grassy ground, did you? Thankfully, we're not Steve Irwin, and we'll not get stuck to death by these things. Can't be too soon for a joke like that, right? That happened years ago, from what I remember. Now up here is what the first Spriteling mentioned, these tree freaks, the first one. And here's why they're kind of awful. The fruits will hurt you if you try to grab them. Ugh. Similar to pineapples, they're spiny, so you can't really grab them. You have to ground pound to try and grab their non-spiky sides. But they still will sometimes hurt you. It's so specific that it gets quite irritating at times. And as you can tell, just when you think you're going to hit them, they decide to move. Now, this is the first of three, actually. The gimmick, quote-unquote, is that each one needs more than more, one more hit to kill. That is, that the first one, of course, had just one, and then... The next one will have two, and then the third one will have three. You get the idea. So our Triceratops enemies here seems to be... Panthers or bears? I don't know. This is a hatch that actually is a little RNG-based, because each time these obstacles change a little bit. One time they were both in the same position, which made it super easy. Oh yeah, I know that one was really hard, but still. Now that we've hit both switches, I'll get us down there real quick. Alright, so we've got ourselves a goblet of fire. Oh, that's normally a garlic. Oh, whatever I say to that. And our yellow treasure over here is actually something that's kind of interesting to me. That's right, it's a violin! I mean, I used to play violin. 
now I play base, but whatever. So, this is going to be a fun hatch for us. Open quotes. No, it is kind of cool, because we have to hop on the metal block and hit the switch with the bomb here. There we go. And yeah, there are, the chests will fall multiple times until you get it. I'd be lying if I didn't have to do that at least once. The first time I played through it, at least. Um, this garlic dispenser is not changing at all, no matter how many we get. Very curious indeed, but not something I'm going to complain about. Well, thank you for bombarding us with enemies, thanks. I love being able to have to... Anyway, first locked hatch here, and it can be quite scary if you're afraid of heights. It's very pretty, but at the same time, it's kind of nerve-wracking. It's easy, though, as all you have to do is fall over the coin and hold forward so you can reach that. And now, the next drop, once you get to the coins, you stay put, and there. Man, Wari almost had severe motion sickness after that. Going very quickly down and then immediately very quickly up. It's like World's Worst Roller Coaster. Yeah, first lightning ring, whatever. We slammed through the trap hatch and got a statue piece, though. So, we pretty much have to do it. Our music has changed from happy and jovial to actually kind of groovy. Sounding like the jungle levels in DKC. Most notably the forest frenzy. Precise here... Which I wasn't. But that's okay. We'll find a rather interesting enemy here before too long. No, not these wind blowers. They're annoying. But these magnets, for whatever reason, can fly and shoot lasers. I don't know, but we'll use them for their intended purpose in a minute. Now, this hatch is easier locked one, just hitting these switches to make the platforms move. I was watching there a bit to make sure that the back two line up. The last one's already moving, so you don't hit the third switch. And if it's not lined up, it can be very difficult to have to either jump to it, or... It could just be a mess. You have to go all the way back and try to line it up. Alright, pal, what do you have to say for us? Oh yeah, we already know about the magnets. What? What do magnets do? Really? I'm not so stupid that I don't know how they work, thanks. I don't know why we're saving them. Those... Spritelings can be so patronizing at times. But yes, he is right. We do have to, in fact, slam these magnets against metal surfaces. And you can only do it by throwing as hard as you can. Just a plain pressing B throw is not going to cut it. You have to hold it for a little while, which, as you'll see later, will be a bit frustrating. Primarily because they... When they get in herds like this, two is not really a herd, but later it'll be more annoying. Yeah, you see, they're quick attackers, so... If you throw one, you gotta wait until it's not gonna fire, like that. There we go. And we have to hit that switch, and it's hard to hit while not jumping down, so... Let's jump down. It's okay, though, since we need to head down the hole in the fake hatch to reach more real hatches, switches, and later statue pieces and actual treasures, so... Yeehaw, I'd say. And we have it, too, in such a way that we don't need to come down here more than once, which is, of course, always preferable. Oh man, guys, this giant sand shape 
It's just moving too fast for me. I don't know how we'll make it. Oh my god, it's so hard to do, so fast moving. I can't even comprehend. It's like I'm never going to be able to jump off in time and actually land on the platform. It's going to just be, oh look, we did it. Yeah, yeah, that was not really difficult at all. Anyways, on to more exciting matters. Kinda. tell if they're supposed to be... I mean, I said monkeys initially, but they look more like... I don't know. They almost look like descendants of Crash Bandicoot or something like that. I don't know, I'm not well versed enough in animology or zoology, as it were. Hey, you wanna see a magic trick? Well, bam! I was just going around, and you don't have to see that. These rams are annoying, but they act like the yetis in the snow level, where they don't hurt you, but they do knock you back. Unfortunately, they knock you quite hard, so you kinda gotta be careful like I just wasn't. We will make that the only time we get rammed off the side, no pun intended. Yeah, the Spriteling in the last hatch was talking about treasures in the hillsides, or cliff sides, and there's the switch there, and of course there are a couple treasure spots where all the rams are running down. Of course the light blue one and the dark blue one, which will not come until much later. Thankfully, they didn't hit us as hard as I ever thought. But that's not all. If you go by too quickly, you might miss it. There's actually one more thing down here. Ah, yes. Ever-coveted statue pieces. Uh-oh, did you hear what I heard? No, oh, well, Scarlet Dispenser's actually going up now. Maybe the first time he doesn't, then each subsequent time he does. I'm still not quite sure on a lot of these game mechanics here. But yes, it's the Tree Freak! Man, and we beat it with one punch! Isn't that strong? Anyway, here's an instance where the magnets are actually going to be quite annoying. Because now we can... That when you're on the blue globe and they hit you, you still keep moving, and it just enables them to hit you faster. It's just very odd how it works. Yeah, there's just another battle ring. We won't show it. And another crystal tower. We won't show him either. Same color, periwinkle, ever so threatening. Man, it was really scary, too. You, only, you have no idea. Down here is going to be our purple chest, but first, we're going to ram into the hatch. Put on sunglasses. And this is possibly the most annoying locked hatch in the universe. Remember the circus hatch we had that involved launching yourself with momentum off a glue globe? This one is entirely based around that and requires precision jumping. It's all very easy to mess up. So, I may have to concentrate here a second. Okay, there we go. Yeah, angling is important here. You gotta kind of make sure you're able to progress. Okay, wow. That went by very, very well. Spider Atticus would only be a more perfect name if it had the last name Finch. Somebody hits that reference. It's a book, by the way. So our treasure here was a uh, crown. I don't know. And now we'll swing right by the blue s blue treasure, and it's it looks like a golf club. And now here's the three-hit tree freak which, no, we cannot ignore. 
watch. You want me to do him in just one hit? Wha bam! Man. This is our last treasure here. And here will be our last statue piece. Running in haphazardly. I was about to say it's a good solution, but it ended up getting us hurt like that. But you don't want to have to worry about jumping in and around those crushing blocks too much. It's just half a heart. Still not sure how those leaves are strong enough to support such a girth. I mean, Mario's just so fat. And they might be big leaves, but... How are they so strong? I don't get it. Anyways, filled up on garlic, we will go ahead and delve into the boss fight here. And I know I made a lot of jokes about it, but no, it is not, in fact, a giant. I'm kind of glad they didn't go all generic for a boss fight with the beanstalk-specific level. Unless you count a giant spider to technically be a giant. That's kind of freaky. <laughs> yes, Wario, scratching your bum is a good reaction to a huge spider. He has combat boots on? Okay. Fun fact, I used to be horrified of spiders as a kid. And this boss always freaked me out whenever I got to it. Same for the spider enemies in the Army Men games, but I have since conquered that fear, pretty much. So the gist of the fight is dodging those attacks and knocking onto a glue globe. And yeah, you have to hit him right where the X is, as always. Alright, Spider, get squished! You know, instead of get wrecked. I'm not clever with put downs, anyway. I that was just kind of like a staring contest for a second. Me and the spider. The spider that can't lay your egg sacks here! Unless you're a male, in which case you probably couldn't lay them anyway. I actually am not going to be quoted on that because it could be, for all I know, they could actually be able to lay eggs, the males. Yeah, as you can tell, when he gets closer to his death, the attacks get faster, but... They still follow the same pattern, so dodging is, of course, a must. Uh oh. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't jump in time, and that was kind of horrifying. And this is the tug of war they were talking about, and I was not ready for it. Next time, though, I will not let him pull me so easily. Yeah, this is a level that does not do well for people with common fears, like heights, or spiders, or trees. Alright, spider, I know it's summer, but now it's time for you to get out of my house, because Long Island and there are lots of trees around my house, and I always find you in the corners of the bathroom and dining room, and... Uh, well, you get the idea. Hit there, but that's okay. How can spiders fire laser beams like that? I don't know. It seemed like he was starting to predict our running path with his attacks, though. Sort of like Klungo and Banjo Tooie. Such smart AI, right? I'm sorry, you didn't see those air quotes I just did. But they were there. Stop predicting my movement! Alright, Spider, I've had it with you. Time for me to get some peppermint oil, put it in a bottle, and spray it in your home, you big... Man, I'm so bad with my put-downs lately, I apologize. 
So that's the big bad spider. He was big and he was bad, but he cannot torment anyone else stupid enough to climb that high on a beanstalk like myself. Hopefully none in search of geese at like golden eggs or something ridiculous like that, right? Okay, enough check on the beanstalk references. So what could the impending boss fight have in store for us? Well, if you've been paying attention, you will know that it'll probably be almost entirely unrelated. <laughs>